Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Good and Bad Pod, Good and Bad of the Week podcast, I should say. That was an immediate John Laronitis botched by me there. But I'm not going to botch this next bit. By us, the British Fist. <coughs> where we review the week in wrestling, Raw, TNA, and SmackDown. But before we do, let me introduce ourselves. I am Mr. Parkin, the guy you can hear right now. And this guy is sitting next to me, who you will be hearing in a couple of seconds. It's NJ. What's up? Make sure you guys subscribe above as usual. Like this video, of course. And please, oh please... Put your comments on anything that happened this week down in that comment section below, including news stories and wrestling events and etc. Please contact us in the links in the rich box below. Right. I think this week we should just go straight on as it was the after Survivor Series and lead up to final resolution for TNA. So we should just head straight into the A show for WWE, which is Monday Night Raw. So the Raw following Survivor Series, we were promised two things on this show. We were promised A, a guest host, Jonah Hill, and we were promised B, the debut of Brodus Clay. Did we get either of them? Hell no. Yes, and do we really need to start delivering on their advertisements or we're not going to believe them in the future? Um, but for the opener this week, we opened up with CM Punk, which kind of makes sense as he did win the title of Survivor Series. The correct person opened the show, in my opinion, as we knew Cena was going to be involved in the main event somehow. Yeah, it was good to open with Punk, because with the WWE, I think they've realised that Punk has he's great on mic, he's good at getting the crowd going, and he's a good entertainer to begin the show, so I thought it was good. Yeah, I mean, he talks about he wanting to be the agent of change, because that worked so well for you before, CM Punk, seeing as they booked you so badly. Um, and then John Laronitis comes out, and then WWE play a little bit of game of good mic talker, bad mic talker. Good Mike Talker insults Bad Mike Talker. Bad Bad Mike Talker gets insulted by Good Mike Talker. The crowd laugh at Bad Mike Talker. In this case, John Laronitis. <laughs> That's so true. It's quite horrible when Laronitis comes out and interferes with Punk stuff, but he really doesn't like Punk. No. I don't think Punk really likes him either, so they're just back with a forward talk before they get to the point of the whole segment. Oh, I love it when real life heat gets translated into WWE storylines. Um... John Laronitis makes the, a Punk vs. Dario rematch next week, which kind of leads me to wonder, why is it not going to happen at the pay-per-view? Does this mean they're going to have other plans now that Dario has got a title shot on Raw, on free TV? Well, now we've seen that this must be made for next week. It's making me think that maybe Punk's going to retain and just move on to something else afterwards. Miz, 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 that Miz, would be Miz. Miz. Um, um, the winning also get the announcement of Punk vs. Ziggler made for tonight, even though the crowd wanted who, NJ? They wanted... Woo, woo, woo! Yeah, I really want to say his name, but yeah, Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder. Um, and we also get Ryder vs. Del Rio tonight. Um, so we'll move on to that then, yeah? The first match, yes. Yeah. Uh, do you open any segment decent, would you say? So-so? Good? It got to the point, but I don't like that one coming up. No, so-so for me as well. Uh, we then get what was essentially a glorified swash match between Zack Ryder and Del Rio. And guess who won this, guys? Guys, who guy who got himself over on the internet, or the guy that WB, or the guy that Vincent Mann kind of created himself. Who do you think won the battle? <laughs> oh, Puerto Rico! Yeah, indeed. I, bet, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to get Del Rio heel heat by being by beating a fan favorite. Um, because his, his heel heat abilities lately haven't been the best. It was a typical jobber match, angry Del Rio after losing the title, kind of what he did to Morrison, like after the last page he lost. Pretty much it, yeah. Um, that's it, really. Two, two minutes 30 a job match. It was fucking good seeing Zack Ryder get his ass handed to him by Zack especially us not being Ryder fans. Very true, yeah. Sheamus versus Jack Swagger. Um, you know, this whole thing was done because uh, Sheamus uh, got DQ'd at the pay-per-view, and we've seen this now three times in a week. This match, again, as much as it's a replay of matches we've already seen, it was a somewhat good match. They put on a real good fight against each other, but we yeah. all knew the outcome. Yeah, Sheamus is always going to win this match. Uh, Sheamus wins clean. Swagger gets no heat. Kind of typical. Um, it was a so-so segment. I mean, it just... I'm not... I don't know. I just wasn't feeling it, personally. No. Um, we then have a Triple H and Kevin Nash segment, I believe. Um, talk, it's just kind of pointless, really, wasn't it? Nash just comes out and kind of just talks. And it's like, well, they, do they have a match with TLC? When are we going to see Triple H? Eh. I think in the next couple of weeks, as they've got built to TLC, something will come up soon or later. Yeah. That's one reoccurring thing we didn't get from this Raw, and that was a build to TLC. We had no matches announced, no real good build, in my opinion. Um, this was a pointless segment in my opinion. Well, not pointless, but kind of like just, it's Kevin Nash talking. That's it. That was it, yeah. Um, Rhodes, we then get Cody Rhodes. Yay! For me, Cody Rhodes, NJ. 
Cody Rhodes gets on the mic and talk about how now he's been unmasked. He's now unbeatable. I hope you are talking truth there, sir. Until what buffoon interferes, NJ? Santino Marina! And my question is, this only went one minute. It was basically a squash match. Cody Rhodes defeated Santino. And I'm like, yeah, come on. It was pretty much, that's all um, Santino's going to do now is yeah. help people in matches. True. Better. True, and then Rhodes goes, Rhodes into the next Booker T, chucks a bit of water in his face, and we now see the, the groundwork being laid for a Cody Rhodes Booker T filler feud, I imagine. Yeah, that'd be good to see, because we want to explain more about it in SmackDown, but yeah, it's good for what it comes. We then got our main event, and this was a good our main event uh, Ziggler versus Punk. You know, we could go on all day about uh, the fact that this was a great match, but the thing I want to just quickly touch on here is the fact that where is this leading? Does it really seem... Because when the match can be good, but have not really much point to it. No, but the way I see it is that they're giving Ziggler the main event bill. They're giving him enough time in a match to show his skills. I'm thinking it's going to be Ziggler up into the title picture. Yeah. Or main event. Maybe so. Who knows in the future? They are really making a big deal out of his arrogance. Um, 16 and a half minutes. Punk wins clean. Um, it was a good match. I, I did enjoy it. I just... Not really sure of the point to it, but I guess it's making a US champ look like he can compete with the WWE champion. So in that sense, it does look, it make a US champ look strong. Even though I have a point with champion versus champion matches, but again, this did have good point, and it was good match. It makes sense for it. Yeah. But please build to the pay-per-view, WWE. Come on. Um, we then get these vignettes. We saw a vignette for Kane. Yeah. Kind of showing this whole mask thing. That was a nice vignette, wasn't it? To, it's nice that they're airing vignettes of a Kane return. It's good. It's not really anything majorly big in WWE, but it's giving them a warm up towards the Mark Henry or possible whoever the World Heavyweight Championship is at yeah. the time. And we also got an It Begins 2012 promo, second, the 2nd of January show. Some promo for that. I imagine it's probably Undertaker or Jericho or something. That was in it. Again, these two segments, these two vignettes here, at least they're getting people talking and it's getting people interested, like me, for example. Yeah, that's what shows me. They need someone who are, who is it? Yeah, a bit like 220 and 2011, remember? A bit like that, yeah. Yes. But we all knew it was Taker. Uh, yeah, exactly. This one we don't know. Uh, we then get a promo from Big Show talking about how he's better than Henry and how he knew how Henry knew the title was slipping away, so he had to get DQ'd, um, and how he pro delivered on his promise that only one of them came away from Survivor Series. This I thought this paper probably could have been safe for SmackDown, but I guess it's kind of needed after Survivor Series. Well, to be honest, we'll go into more about uh, SmackDown later, but it, could, it should have been safe for SmackDown. Mm. It should have. Barrett versus Kobe Kingston. The Barrett barrage continues. FTW, doesn't it? Very good. I really like this. Obviously, it had the involvement of Orton, which could continue their feud, but we all knew uh, Wade was going to get the win because Cody's not at the same level as Wade Barrett. Exactly. 11 and a half minutes. Kobe Kingston, now that Evan Bourne has kind of been suspended, is now essentially a jobber. So um, Barrett gets the win. The Barrett Bros continues. Orton comes out after like two minutes. So it looks like this whole Orton Barrett feud is on. Barrett was pretty dominant throughout the whole of the match. I think that's the way you're supposed to do it. And at the end of the match, Barrett did something very good, in my opinion. He stared at Orton as he was delivering the wasteland, and that's kind of an intense way to sort of begin a feud or something. And then it's he true. cuts a promo on Orton. It was, a, it was a good segment to establish the feud and a good match that lasted a long time. It's definitely started off something that I'm looking forward to watching now. Yeah. Uh, any more thoughts on that segment? What I'd say is that way Barrett is getting exactly what he deserves after... Too long, I thought, yep. since he joined SmackDown, but here we go. Good segment, then. It was. Yeah, we didn't get on to the main event. Um, right, so you've got no rock here, so you can only imagine three people are going to be in this. John Cena and Awesome Truth. Um, you know, John Cena comes out, he talks about how, you know, he talks about the rock last night, but he has no hate. And it's kind of like so unreal. You would not have, how you would not have hate towards the rock and your John Cena. This pissed me off. It's just a real big flaw in his character, I find, that he never seems to hate anyone. And it's not good. It really isn't. Well, he's had hatred against Orton in the past, but that's because of, it went into family matters. But with this, it was suddenly a lot different. It became more Cena. You've just been overpowered by yeah. The Rock, and he rocked bottom at the end of the show. There are two reasons why I would probably have some discomfort or dis, uh, friendship towards him. Yeah, and the fact that also Rock, um, you know, Rock outshined him because even though he's been away from the ring for seven years and Cena's been working his ass off every day for the last seven years. It's kind of another one reason to want to hate some guy, isn't it? Um, we then, but then the segment gets better when Awesome Truth interfere, talking about how John Cena's algo, algo, that's no such word, ego won't allow him, won't allow um, to show how much Rock showed him up last night. And it's so true. 
Rock showed all three of them up, in my opinion, in that main event as far as which isn't good for your current roster, but good for pay-per-view buys, unfortunately. No, but this segment did get a bit more spicier when uh, John Cena started having his say back yeah. to Awesome Truth. Yeah, basically, he, he basically tells Miz and R-Truth that they insulted each other. And my question here is, why would you believe John Cena about these sort of rumour things that they've been saying? And also, and then we get the breakup of Awesome Truth. What a shame. It's such it an insane tag team. They left their mark by getting involved in pay-per-views when they weren't allowed to be there. But they should have become tag champs to leave a bigger mark. But sadly, that didn't happen. They thought they're better mm. apart. They were never a legitimate threat to John Cena and Rock. Um, you know, this this whole thing happened because our troops were smoking weed or whatever it was. So, you know, this is this is their way of breaking them up, getting our truth off TV. I still feel they should have kept them together and had work written our truth off TV another way. But I guess they made different plans for Miz, so... I didn't like the breakup personally, but it no, was a good way to end Raw, though. And all I can really say is that it, we didn't expect that to happen. We expected him to compete with John Cena, and now it's got us wondering what's going to happen next between Miz, R Truth, or Miz and Cena. I hope they keep R Truth heel and not turn him face. Um, just saying. Um, so, yeah, Raw overall, it was okay. We'll go more more into that in a rubber post, but I'll say, yeah, they highlighted the right guys, and it was a decent follow on to the Fire Series, but it didn't do much for the pay per view. That's my only issue with this show. No, but now the thing is, let's go on to TNA. Power, power, so on TNA this week, well last week we had the whole Angle Storm thing with Storm with Angle being Storm's attacker. This week we opened up with Angle again. This makes total sense as it ended last week's show, Angle begins this week's show. I think that was good because obviously we have to have him have his say to explain why he attacked Storm yeah. and what's going to happen next. Yeah, and James Storm in this segment was very good on the mic. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's very hard to remember what he said because, you know, a lot of the stuff he said was just really good stuff. Um, he basically talks about it was personal, but now it's business. It's kind of usually the other way around, but, you know, it was a good segment between the two. I enjoyed these two, and I'm looking forward to their pay per view match a lot. The way they've done this. The fact that Storm now had a big front angle and Angle had a problem with uh, yeah. Storm, it's going to bring up a good match of pay per view. Yeah, and save that big beer money blow off match, which you want to see for a bigger pay per view. Um, but then we get we get Storm beating down Kurt Angle, and then Daniels, Bully Ray, and Jeff Jarrett comes out, and I'm like, has Daniels joined them all or something? That was a bit strange, wasn't it? I think it's just all the whole packing all the yeah. heels together wrestled the paces. Yeah, I mean, we had a main event elimination tag match and that kind of announced sort of in, in this opening segment because um, we also had Mr. Anderson, RVD and AJ Styles coming down to brawl with their respective feuds. Uh, there was no Rude or Hardy in this segment which was a little bit disappointing not seeing your wide away champ but again, it was a good opening segment to establish the rivalry between, between Angle and Storm and a good opening segment to set up for that main event match later which is a four on four elimination match. I agree. I think they've got the right things going. They've got the opening segment was effective because it gave us the main event and yeah. it had the right people in the beginning, I thought. Even though it was a little bit of a clusterfuck, but we'll yeah. move on. Um, good segment. Crimson and Morgan versus Mexican America in the rematch for the TNA Tag Team Championships. Um, Crimson and Morgan were pretty much dominant. Need we say any more? Two minutes. They were always going to win the rematch. Yeah, they were obviously going to win because I think they're going to continue their uh, rivalry in a friendship kind of way in this tag team. Yeah. I thought it was quite effective. Yeah, I wonder who they're going to challenge next, though. That's a British invasion, maybe. Maybe you see a pretty bit of British invasion. Magnus and Doug Williams. Um, yeah, I mean, it just establishes them as a strong tag team, and they should be wiping the floor in Mexican America. Let's hope they get the fuck off TV. Um, we, now, we then get a whole sort of half an hour segment of the knockouts. Um, it begins with a Karen Jarrett segment when she comes out, pretty much hogs the mic, and talks about a lingerie match being later on in the night. We're going, going against her morals of being a, the VP of knockout talent. The way I look at this is that, obviously, I don't know why she's still got this job. And to be honest, her getting involved in this, saying that we have a lingerie match, I really think it's taken away her character. Yeah, and it's also taken away from that match we're going to be getting to the pay-per-view between Gail Kim and Mickey James. It's just all this focus on Karen Jarrett. Why? And Velvet Sky as well. What is Karen, Karen and Velvet Sky? It seems like that's the match of the pay per view, and Gail Kim and Gail Kim versus um, versus Mickey James is kind of like an afterthought all of a sudden. It's a bit of a shame because obviously you do expect their knockouts championship to be a big thing, yeah. but it looks like Karen's the biggest thing. Still looking forward to that match though. I still think it'll be pretty good. Same. But moving on, we have two backstage segments. Um, a whole segment of TV of backstage segments. We had the first one with the knockouts complaining about being in a lingerie match. Um, 
Never really had a problem with them before, did they? Miss Tetsmucker, Terra, Velvet Sky. The thing is, this segment, I think they're just dragging on the knockouts too yeah. long, and this one starts to lose a bit of inch, and I'm like, come on, TNA, get to the next point. Yeah, I mean, they could have put an X-Division match in this sort of segment. You know, the time that they... They could have given more time to other segments, like, like they put, put, could have put in an X-Division segment here or something. Just something different, rather than having a half an hour long knockout segment, which kind of lost its, you know, kind of lost its appetite after a while. Um, and then we also got this tiny two-minute backstage segment between Gail Kim and Mickey James, where they end up, where Mickey James end, ends up getting beaten down. It's like that much tiny bit is focused on your pay-per-view match. Come on, get your fucking priorities right here, TNA. It was disappointing, but all I can say is that this led to the match. Yeah, Winter Angelina, Madison Rain versus Velvet, Tetschmacher and Tara. Um, this got a lot of time, didn't it? Which is unusual. I know that I know that the knockout segment last week got the highest rated segment on TNA, but this got a really long time. First ever lingerie match. I can understand they're trying to entertain people with this, but it really does take away from what TNA do quite well, and that is have a decent knockouts division. Just It just took a lot away from it. Again, this match got a good rank, like you said. It had good concentration on all the uh, knockouts that were in the match. And I think, to be honest, I'm just looking at it thinking, again, not much. none of these are actually going to the pay-per-view. Exactly. So this was just filling up TNA's time to build a paint thing. Thanksgiving special, wasn't it? So they had to fill it somehow, I guess. Um... At the end of the match, we get Mickey J Mickey James taking the belt away from Madison Rain. A Velvet Sky wins. It just seemed like this whole thing was done to try and promote Velvet and Karen rather than the pay per view match, and that's one of the reasons why I really didn't like this this whole segment. I don't mind them getting a lot of time, and I don't mind seeing some of those in lingeries, but it's just that the whole purpose of it kind of really devalued the whole segment. The lack Pretty of purpose. Much. It did. Um, next segment, we get Jeff Jarrett doing a CM Punk on our asses. And coming out dressed as Jeff Hardy with the whole mask and everything, which is fucking stupid, by the way. It was again, again, it's adding more of uh, Jeff Jarrett trying to get his point across to Hardy in a different way. So I guess it was effective that way. Jeff Jarrett's involved in the opening segment, the main event, and then he gets a segment for his feud. Of course, it's Jeff fucking Jarrett. Um, despite being in the main event, he gets his own segment. It's a bit annoying that is when you could devote time to the younger guys and promoting other matches. Um, he basically mocks Jeff Hardy and his fans. You know, I didn't mind the mic work from Jeff Jarrett. It's just that he's on the TV for so fucking long and he could get things done so much quicker. True. The amount of times he appeared on it was a bit disappointing. But he got his point out of cross to yeah. actually get Hardy to actually come out to Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, and he pretty Hardy pretty much beats on Jeff Jarrett. But then we get Bully Ray and Daniels coming down to beat on Jeff Hardy, which again brings out AJ Anderson and RBD. You know, they're trying to hype up for that main event. Um, it was a little bit, again, of a clusterfuck. But... The whole focus of this segment was on Jarrett beating on Hardy. The heels come out on top. I wasn't too, I wasn't too displeased with that. It's just that all this time, you've got all this shit going on in the ring. Like it's all on Jeff fucking Jarrett. Well, that's the kind of point I had. But again, we've seen these wrestlers come out earlier in the night. So it's just adding too much going at one time. I just don't like it that much. Could you not showcase these five fuses they've got in this main event in seg separate segments so they could each stand out? I don't know. Just something TNA could have done here. I had a big problem with the structuring of their show. I didn't mind the Safari Series main event, but the structuring of their show really reminded me a lot of Russo, um, I'm just saying. Uh, and this next segment reminded me a lot of Russo too. Eric Young versus Robbie E in a Loser Wears a Turkey Suit match. Why was this even there? It's Thanksgiving. It's really pointless and bitter and I just don't really like it. No, it just sucked. They could have had something so much better in this. Robbie T wears the turkey suit. Yeah, that's all really. It was, even even for a match, it was badly booked. Um, yeah. I'll just move on to the main event. That was so pointless filler shit. Um in our main event in the evening, we have TNA ripping off Survivor Series, it seems, with Team Angle, um, consisting of Jeff Jarrett, Billy Ray Daniels, and Robert Roode, but facing Team Storm, face consisting of Anderson, RVD, AJ Styles, and Jeff Hardy. So they're trying to hype up five feuds here in one segment. Um, well, it was a nice done match, I thought. She had the right wrestlers in the right teams, the uh, good feuds going in the ring, so I thought it was okay. Got good length, which was good, because main minutes, events yeah. need good length. Yeah, it did get 20 minutes, which I did like. The elimination, the elimination factor kind of helped that. Um, we had, we had, you know, we had Robert Roode low blowing AJ to get DQ'd, continuing their thing there. Daniels pinning RVD after angle interference to, you know, get that get that storyline, keep that storyline going. So they did a decent job of continuing storylines. Ended up three on one with AJ facing Immortal, and then Jeff Hardy comes out, and then they eliminate them. Eliminate the last three heels in like two, three minutes. Yeah, it did go quite quickly, and I was expecting more of an enjoyable match with Hardy and Ball, but mm. again, it just rushed it quite a bit for me. Yeah, it was a little bit rushed at the end, but it's still still a decent match, though. I'll give it that. A uh, good way to end the show. Um, after the match as well, we have Rude attacking AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy, 
and he stands tall over AJ Styles. So I guess that's good hype for their, their match at final resolution. But we didn't get too much pay-per-view hype tonight either. That's the main problem I have with the show. No pay-per-view hype. No, no like little. This was disappointing. We could have had a few, especially with the knockouts, the amount of time they were shown to yeah. in the show. But I guess we did not get that all. No, I do hope Jeff. I do hope they don't put Hardy in that title picture soon. I want to see James Storm go for that title first before Jeff Hardy. Hardy could be better, but not win. I yeah. guess that could be the case. Maybe who knows? Um, there we go. That's another. That's TNA Impact done. Um, I had real problems with the structuring of their show, but we'll talk more about this in the overall fourth section, which will be preceding the next segment, which is SmackDown. <laughs> So we started off this SmackDown with a video package recapping Mark Henry and Big Show's match and Mark Henry getting injured. And the whole thing that was making me looking forward to this SmackDown was what's next for the World of Weight Championship? And now Mark Henry's injured. That's what was making me want to watch this SmackDown. That was the draw, having Mark Henry actually either appear on the show or have some kind of involvement just so we know what's going to happen next. Yeah, and it really does show like what we were interested in the Survivor Series, doesn't it? Um, but there we go. We open up with Mark Henry on crutches. Uh, talking about how people are happy to see him in pain, that they're giving no respect to him. He's going to fight through the pain. I hope he does, because I want to see him I want to see him keep the World of Weight Championship until at least Royal Rumble. He does need to hold it for a little bit longer, because obviously if he's going to retire soon, he needs to have a title lost on a good pay-per-view. Yeah, and then out comes Big Show as well. We get some good interaction between them two, talking about how Mark Henry knew that the title was slipping away, so we had to get DQ'd. I imagine there's going to be a rematch at some point, maybe, between them two, whether or not. The circumstances of this week's main event can occasionally play, but it was a good interaction between those two. I did, I have enjoyed their interaction over these last couple of months. And it was basically their conversation, their speaking, that actually led to Mark Henry getting knockout punch. Yeah, by Big Show. Um, and then an exciting thing happened. Um, we had Daniel Bryan coming down, cashing money in the bank on a pretty knocked out Mark Henry. He pins him one, two, three, and celebrates. It was a quite exciting way of opening SmackDown this week. I it thought. got a, well, even though it's can, there was a lot of cheers and it definitely got Daniel Bryan the good feeling that he wanted when he crushed it in. Yeah, and it's providing us with the well, as based on what happened next, it's providing us with a tease. We're seeing Daniel Bryan with that World of Weight Championship cashing it in, but then Teddy Long comes out to tell Daniel Bryan that the cashing doesn't count as Henry wasn't able to compete, abiding by the rules. So te there, Teddy Long gets a little bit of respect from me there, even though I don't really like him. So it's kind of like a sort of so close yet so far for Daniel Bryan, but he's still included in the normal contention match later while keeping his money in the bank briefcase. Yeah, that's the good opening segment, good opening thought with Daniel Bryan and Mark Henry and Big Show. So I thought it was kind of a good opener. It was a really good way of opening the show, I thought. Um, Daniel Bryan's cash in. You know, the crowd's going to go mental. Well, canned crowd, I should say. Um, right, so after that, we get Justin Gabriel versus Hunico in what felt to me like a bit of a filler match. It was. These two, I think, to be honest, could be doing a lot more better things, but because of Sin Carl's injury yep. and SmackDown's book with uh, Justin Gabriel, they're not actually going anywhere. Yeah, it's funny how Justin Gabriel has now turned into a job. I do think he could be doing so much better than he is, but like you said, after the Sin Cara injury, there's not really much for Hunico to do on this show anymore. So you're kind of having to involve him in filler, and I think the crowd realised this because they really didn't care, did they? No, again, this match was somewhat good, but obviously it won't really lead anywhere. It, it's a sign of the old SmackDown. They had good matches, but no storylines like in these se in these segments, which really affects how you know bad they were. Um, but this segment to me wasn't very good. I'm um, mm. just saying. Um, we then got our diva segment: AJ and Caitlyn versus Beth and Natalia. Alicia Fox is on commentary here. Um, how many times have we seen this match now? So many freaking times. This match is getting replayed, and even though we have the right people winning, it's nothing big because they're defeating two yeah. divas who have hardly doing anything that stands out or as important as other divas. Exactly. Apart from winning my heart, AJ. Um, why why does Natalia get the win here though? I mean, I, I find it stupid how Natalia got the win, and then you have Alicia Fox come in. She walks into the ring, and divas are doing back off. I'm like, you're supposed to be the divas of fucking doom. The way I look at this is that Natalia's been building up. She slowly had the losing streak. Now she's getting built up with wins. Then you had that, like you said. I don't know where they're going with the divas of doom at the moment. And where are they going with this whole AJ and Caitlyn thing? Eve as well with the tag team breaking up. What the fuck is the point? And they can't even feature the fucking divas champion properly. I guess one of them will turn heel and just have some kind of match going on in the yeah. future. It makes me thank for those fucking tea time guys. But anyway, we get the news that Tuesday's SmackDown is going to be hosted by none other than Mick Foley, giving 
what I feel is a special feeling to the SmackDown lights, but they need to do as much as they can to make that SmackDown feel special. And I think Mick Foley is part of that special guest host. Mick Foley, I thought, was more making Raw feel special, but having on SmackDown, as long as he does something that's important, then I have no problem with it. And we also get the announcement as well, much to Mark Henry's disarray, that next week is going to be a steel cage match featuring the number one contender from that four-way and Mark Henry. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of making me look forward to SmackDown next week, even though I feel it's kind of compromising the pay-per-view somewhat. But it'll be an interesting match because it's a cage match. We can all know monsters are good in cages. Yes, um, Ziggler and Swagger versus Ryder and Sheamus, uh, tag team match featuring the US title feud. What we what we think is going to be the US title feud, and what is essentially Sheamus and Swagger, which is pretty much filler now that Christian's injured, isn't it? Really? Yeah, I think to be honest. To sh- Christian Shem should be finished. Shem should be going on something else. No. And Ziggler and Swagger, I guess, they're, they're just going to flow about and Ziggler hope to get to in the future. Yeah, Ryder pins Ziggler, which kind of teases to me that they're going to have some kind of pay-per-view match and maybe I feel that Zack Ryder will finally win that title and Ziggler will move on to bigger and better things. It's needed to happen because he yeah. does deserve it now. Yeah, and notice how they did show his arrogance a lot in this as well, so they're maybe going to try and use that maybe. Just, just thinking of things off the top of my head here. Yeah, the match got a lot of time as well, which was decent, but maybe a little bit too long. A good length match. Again, Ziggler needs this to be shown that he is a main event now and can last long matches. Wade Barrett called AJ a 14 year old girl. <laughs> that was the highlight of the whole second backstage. <laughs> that was awesome. I marked out by that shit. Um, and AJ, why Daniel Bryan when you can be with me, Daniel Parkin? I'm just saying. Um, well, why go with Daniel Bryan in the first place? Because really. He should be going off on his own. And yeah. Divas should just somehow improve. And that's how they ruined him the first time, wasn't it, with Divas? It was. Yeah. Another reason why Asia should just come with, come live with me and not be with Daniel Bryan. I'm just saying. Mate. Um, T- Heath Slater versus Teddy Biasi. Um, Heath Slater is now essentially a jobber, I guess. Um, at the beginning of this match, we get an interesting promo from Jinder Mahal talking about how D- how DBSE is hanging around with the with the DBSC posse commoners when he could be having all this money from his dad, you know, starting a few between the two, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's going to be some bitter because Ted's going to eventually, hopefully go against Cody again and yeah. be done right this time. Uh-huh. But again, this match, it, it just sucked. I didn't really like it. It, no. it went on a bit longer than I was hoping. For. Yeah, Ted T- 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 DBSC should be squashing Heath Slater, especially seeing as Heath Slater hasn't been on... TV at all. I'm not really a big fan of this Jinder Teddy Biasi fight. I know it's filler, but we saw Teddy Biasi beat Z- beat Jinder Mahal in one minute last in one of the last episodes of SmackDown. It's like, well, why? You know, how can I believe these guys are feuding? Just saying. Yeah, all I can say is filler. That's it. Exactly. Uh, we also there was news this week also that Vincent Mann is kind of high on people getting over uniquely. So with this whole DBSE posse thing that he's got going at the moment, DBSE might be getting a push, which is only good because. They dropped the ball with him so many times now. It's about time they did something bright with this guy, isn't it? Because persons that have done big things or bigger things in the past should be kept on being pushed further and further and hopefully Ted will get that. Another mark out moment for me on this night was an interview segment involving Cody Rhodes. This segment is only good for me as a Cody Rhodes mark. Um, Yeah, so that was the interview segment. I enjoyed it. Yes, he said said exactly what I wanted to hear, that he's he's better without the mask and I could look forward more to come from Cody Rhodes. And can you dig that sucker (laughs) as well? And then we get on to our main event. It led quite well onto the main event, which was Wade Barrett versus Cody Rhodes versus Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton in a number one contendership match for the World of Weight Championship match next week on SmackDown in a steel cage. They basically started on two on two sort of thing. Yep. The match went quite smooth. I enjoyed it, and then they all started going against each other, which was about time. Yeah, I can't believe this wasn't the longest match of the night. It was shorter than that tag match. It got twelve minutes though. Um, you know, let's just cut to the chase here. Daniel Bryan wins after putting the bell lock on Cody Rhodes. Um, thoughts? Yeah, is out of all the rest that were in that match, I guess yeah. Cody Rhodes was the one who deserved to get pinned or submitted, mm. and that Daniel Bryan. He's already money in the bank. They, he had two chances. Yeah. He had uh, uh, at the pay per view, and again, he blew tonight. Exactly. Yeah. He's already got a guaranteed number one contendership. Why are they putting him in a number one contendership match? I, I don't know. It's just, it, it just, it really annoys me that they're trying to hype up this SmackDown as if it's a freaking pay per view. Um, but yeah, I mean, Daniel Bryan wins. Uh, I'm kind of excited for next week's SmackDown now, I guess. Steel Cage match for the title. It feels like it should be on a pay per view. The fact that it's live might tell us that a cash in might be coming, maybe. Well, to be honest, he says he's going to wait to WrestleMania, but to Get be honest, he's just not been booked 
in a way that we could possibly see him at WrestleMania. We'll see him at a lower pay per view. So just get it done out the way. You might as well just get it done out the way because it's not going to have the same impact you you Daniel Bryan fans feel it will at WrestleMania. I'm just saying. Um, But still, a nice way to end SmackDown, I thought. Even though it was Daniel Bryan, at least it's giving him a shot. It's got me excited for next week's SmackDown. So overall, I thought it was a good main event, even if the repercussions of Daniel Bryan winning might be a little bit eh. Yeah, he's done his job getting us ready to look for next week's SmackDown, but not the pay-per-view, which was kind of disappointing. Yeah, this leaves us to say one thing, though. Will we see Daniel Bryan as our World Heavyweight Champion next week? Who knows? Tune in next week to find out. Yes, now we'll go on to our overall thoughts. NJ, you know what I'm going to ask you next now. Um, so I don't, I, I really do really don't need to say it, do I? What did you think was the best, what do you think was the order of the show's quality this week? Raw! Yep. Hmm. I'm close to saying SmackDown, but TNA was pretty good for me. Okay, um, why was Raw your top, why was Raw your top one? It's just that Raw had more build towards the pay-per-view. It had set the, re- the recipe we wanted to see after the pay-per-view, yeah. so I thought it did a good show with them. Uh, I personally thought, yeah, I thought Raw was probably just the better show of the week. Um, I mean, it wasn't exactly a great week. Raw Raw had, you know, the right people showcased on it. It didn't do too much for the pay-per-view, I, I didn't feel, anyway. Um, but the, some of the segments in there were pretty decent. I'd say that SmackDown and TNA, I can't really decide between those two. I did enjoy SmackDown's opening and main event. And but I also enjoyed TNA's opening and main event as well. Even though a lot of their a lot of, it felt like a Russo book show. Um, so in my opinion, Raw is definitely at the top. Just and then you have Raw and then you have SmackDown and TNA kind of lingering in second place. In my opinion, yeah. And all I can say now is that the SmackDown's got us ready to see next week's SmackDown. Yeah. Raw's got us wondering what to happen next with awesome choosing scene and, and the title match and the title and TNA. Well, again. They have Final all resolution. these, yeah, and all these different rivalries going on. So it's done their job, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so not the best of weeks, but still decent. We gave Raw, I think, a B minus, C plus, TNA and SmackDown are both C C minuses. Yeah, I guess. Were. So there we go. That's our thoughts on this week in wrestling. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts on any of the shows we've we essentially did a short review of, or do you have any thoughts on the news art news we've, that's been coming through this week? Just let us know your thoughts on anything that we said or commented on. Down in that comment section below. And NJ, finish this video, finish this audio off. Thank you very much for listening to our podcast. It's been enjoyable to do. All I've said now is keep your comments coming. Leave them in the comment section below. And that has been it from the British Fish. This is Mr. Parkin yeah. and me, NJ. Goodbye.